Today, let's explore the geometry spreadsheet in Houdini. We'll start by setting up a compact workspace. Today, we won't need the shelf tools, and we don't need the top tools here on the viewport. Over here in the network editor, we won't use the menu, and we're not going to do any animation so we can collapse the timeline. So there we go. We have a really nice... Oh, actually, wait. There's one last thing we can compact. Up here at the very top, there's the file menu. We can go ahead and collapse that as well gives us a few extra pixels and I will take them. So here we go. In the upper left, we have the viewport. Upper right, we have the network editor. Bottom right, we have the parameter pane. And in the bottom left, we have the star of today's video and that is the geometry spreadsheet. To begin, let's make a geometry. We're gonna call this the demo geometry. And inside, let's add a box. When I add this box, keep an eye both on the viewport but also on the geometry spreadsheet down here. I'll rename it box. So we see the box appear here and in the geometry spreadsheet there's four tabs. The first one displays all the points in the shape that we see. The next one displays all the vertices. Then there are primitives and then lastly there's geometry details. A cube has eight points and they start numbering them at zero, and so we see there are, in fact, eight points. One nice thing about the geometry spreadsheet is if you select a point in the viewport, it will highlight which point you selected over here. Right now, we only see the points. The points aren't numbered, but if you come over here, you can say display numbers next to each point. So here is point number five. So if we select that, point number five is highlighted. You can also select primitives. So if we select this primitive, it highlights not only the points on that primitive, but if you come over to the primitives tab, it shows which primitive was selected. Next, I wanna show you that if we come over here and select the box, let's resize it and watch what happens to the geometry spreadsheet. Let's just stretch it in the X direction. As we stretch it in the X direction, the only thing that should change are the X coordinates. The Y and Z coordinates shouldn't change. Let's see if that's the case. It is. There we go. So it updates very quickly. And let's take a moment actually and revisit these four tabs and see what we have here. So in the point tab, the first column is the ID for each point. So this cube has eight points and each point is given a number from zero through seven. Then we have three columns. We have the X coordinate column, PX, the Y coordinate, column PY and then the Z coordinate PZ. There's this dropdown called view and it lets you decide which attributes you want to show or hide. Right now we definitely want to see the coordinates for each point so we're just going to leave that there. But let's do something a little different here. Let's do something more to our box. Let's come down here and add a color node to it and let's make it a nice purple color. Look at what happened to our point spreadsheet here. There are still the X, Y, and Z coordinates, but it added three new columns, R, G, B for red, green, and blue. So this is for the color. It's the first part, C, D, is for diffuse color. And because there are three columns with C, D, in a way you think of this is actually treated internally as a vector. So it's a vector with three parts, a red part, green part, and blue part. Just as over here, each of these three columns starts with the letter P. That's v, P for position. So P is a vector and it has three components, X, Y, and Z. Notice if we come over to the vertex tab, the primitive tab, or the details tab, there's no color information. The color information was only added to the, to the point tab. And that's because if you select the color node and look at the parameters, look at the class, where is the color being added? It's being added to the point. If you want, you could say add it to the vertex. If we do that, the color columns disappear. Now, if you go over to the vertex tab, the color columns are on that tab now. Similarly, if you were to come to the class and say, put them on primitives, the point tab has no color information, no color information on the vertex tab, but if you go to the primitive tab, there are now the, the color vector, the CD vector is there. One other thing I'd like to point out is if you click on this node and select I, it gives you a quick summary, a quick count of all the different types of things you have. It lets you know how many rows are in the point tab, primitive tab, vertex tab. And we know that there are eight points. If you go to the primitive tab, 
there are six primitives. And then lastly, the vertex tab, there's 24. Next, what I'd like to do is to add a different shape. I'd like to add a tetrahedron. There we go. A tetrahedron is what's known as a platonic solid. And there are five types of platonic solids in mathematics. And in Houdini, there's two extras, a soccer ball and a teapot. We're just going to use a tetrahedron and call it a tet for short. So I'm just going to rename this tet. This is currently not displayed, so let's display that. And so now we see that we have a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron has four points and then four primitives. Each one of these faces is a primitive. Look what happens if we select one of the primitives, by the way. If we select this face, that's primitive number zero. This primitive has three points to it. 0, 3, and 2. And if you come to the point, you can see that 0, 2, and 3, 0, 3, and 2 are highlighted. But above all, notice that when I selected the tetrahedron, only the tetrahedron data is showing up here. So what would happen if we were to merge the box, the purple box, with our gray tetrahedron? Let's just do that with a quick merge and make this visible. So what that did was if we, every node you select over here, by the way, in the network editor, every node you select, that is the data that will be displayed in the geometry spreadsheet. So in a way, what this shows is what's happening inside Houdini is here's the essential data that Houdini needs to do its work. Each node takes in a geometry here, does something to it, and spits out a new geometry. So the box has this set of eight points. The color, let's switch back to coloring the points. The color node takes that geometry of the box and adds three new columns, the color columns. The merge combines that with the tetrahedron geometry. So the tetrahedron has four points, the box has eight points, and when you merge them together there are 12 points. And notice that the order matters. So here the box is wired in first, followed by the tetrahedron. And the box points are listed first, followed by the tetrahedron points. If you switch them over here, you can switch the order in which they're wired. If you go full screen on the network editor, you can see it switch the order of the wires here. And over here in the geometry spreadsheet, now the tetrahedral points are listed first, followed by the cube points. Notice underneath the merge, there's this little yellow exclamation point. It's a warning. Let's see what that is. It says a mismatch of attributes has occurred. What's happened here is on this color node, there are six columns on the point tab of the geometry spreadsheet. There's three point columns and three color col columns. On the tetrahedron node, there's only three columns, the position columns. So when you merge them together, it doesn't want to throw any data away. It wants to keep the point and color data from the box, but it's now posed with a problem. We have a tetrahedron. So with the tetrahedron, what color data do we give it? And by default, it gave it white. And in the warning, that's what it's saying, is that some attribute values may not be initialized to what you would expect. So it doesn't know what color you want the tetrahedron to be. Houdini's gone ahead and made them white. If you want to change them to something, or give it a different color, you need to take control and do that. And so we can do that here. If we could just come up here and let's insert a color node. And for the tetrahedron, let's make it yellow. Notice the yellow exclamation point is now gone because the tetrahedron node has both position and color data. The cube has position and color data. And when you merge them together, it just puts, it stacks one on top of the other. Another thing I really like about the geometry spreadsheet is the ability to filter out what appears in it. Because as you work, let's say you want to add normal vectors. Uh, we added color, but let's keep adding data to it. So let's come to the box and let's add normal vectors. And we'll add them to the points. So now at each point we have a normal vector. And if you click on the box, you see first we have th three columns, the position. After the normal node has pr finished processing, it what it did is added three new columns. It actually, um, the components of a normal vector. A normal vector has three components, X, Y, and Z. So it added three new columns, one for each component. Now, if we jump down to the color, it added three new columns for color. So we've what we're doing is we're adding more and more data to the geometry spreadsheet. 
And once again, that yellow exclamation point is back. And that's because we did not add normal vectors to the tetrahedron. Out of curiosity, why is the tetrahedron black here? If we come over here and look at the color, we made it yellow. Okay, that's red and green, so it should be yellow. And yet when we merge them, hmm, it still says it's yellow here. If you highlight the points on the tetrahedron, whoops, if you highlight the if you select the four points on the tetrahedron, you can see that the color is yellow, but it's not rendering as yellow. Huh. If anyone has an idea why, why that might be the case, let me know. I, I do find this kind of curious. So now at the merge node, we have a lot going on. We have nine columns. Well, 10 if you count the ID. This first one here, it's, it's not given a name, but this is just a unique numerical identifier for that particular point. What if you're only interested in the position of points at this point? Right now, the color and normal vectors aren't something that troubles you. Let's say you're debugging a problem and you're really interested in the position. If you come up to view, you can say hide the color, hide the normal, and only show the position columns. That can be very helpful. Also, if you're only inter interested in the position of a particular point, like let's say this point here, Notice that it's highlighted. That's fine and all if there's a small number of points, but what if you have like a million points? This could be a bit of a challenge. Under view, you can say only show selected. So if you don't select anything, nothing's showing up. If you come to the cube and say, let's look at the top four points, then those four points will show up. So that's another way to take what can sometimes be a runaway amount of data on your geometry spreadsheet and pare it down to only those rows and those columns you're interested in. The selected will reduce the number of rows to only those that have been selected in the viewport. So if we select the points in the tetrahedron, it only shows those rows. And then over here, you select which columns you do wanna see. Do you wanna see the position vector? We do. And maybe we wanna see the normal vector, or maybe we also wanna see the color vector. So one question you might be wondering is, what is the value of the geometry spreadsheet? What does this bring? It seems that the nodes over here and what's going on in the viewport is where all the action is. For me, I'm a numbers guy. I like to be able to look at the data each step along the way. So box, add normals, add colors, get to the merge, and make sure that all the data is showing up and and changing the way I would expect it to change. And he, this would be what happened today was kind of a fortuitous example. We have a tetrahedron here, which we made yellow, but when we merge it, it goes black. And I'm kind of curious why. And by looking in the geometry spreadsheet, I realized the, the color data is there. So something else is going on. So when it comes to debugging, the geometry spreadsheet can be of tremendous value. But also I would say it just helps you to understand how Houdini works. Each node, each operator is, is kind of like executing a little bit of geometry code. A it's, it's like you're writing a computer program visually. Step one, line of code, make a box with these parameters that we see down here. Step two, add normal vectors to all the points on the shape. Step three, color it, make it a purple box and step four, merge it with the yellow tetrahedron. And what these nodes are actually doing is taking a geometry spreadsheet and either adding to it or changing the values in the spreadsheet. That's basically what's going on. So like if we take this merge and add a transform node, now if we come up here and say, let's squish it in the X direction, you can go through and see that a lot of the numbers are changing. Some of the normal vectors are changing. The X coordinates are changing as well. And so really each one of these nodes is under, it allows you to look under the hood of Houdini and see, okay, really what's happening here is you have spreadsheets of data. And what the nodes do is they act on the spreadsheet. It takes an input spreadsheet, it does something to it and spits it out to the next node for it to do its own work. And I found it really helpful to be able to know that that's what's going on with Houdini. At the end of the day, the picture here, the viewport here, the network editor here are very user friendly. But behind the scenes, what Houdini is doing is taking data and just operating on them with different functions. These functions can be add new columns, 
transform existing points and normal vectors and things like that. And when it comes time for you to start writing your own assets, your own digital assets, or writing custom nodes, being able to look at the geometry spreadsheet and be able to kind of test what you're doing becomes priceless. So I hope this helps. Let me know what you think. And if you can figure out why this tetrahedron is not yellow, I would definitely appreciate that. By the way, this is a clue. When I come to this normal vector here on the box, if I disable it, the yellow comes back. So I have a feeling what's going on, I, I quit too soon, is that the normal vector for the normal vector for the tetrahedron, let's look only at the normal vector, is zero. And because when it's computing the way light should bounce off it, if there's no normal vector, I think essentially you've created like a black body, a black hole for light. You need there to be a normal vector to say where should the light bounce once it hits it. So I think that's what's happening, is that if we turn off this normal vector, now if we come back to the bottom here and look at all the, the data we have, it is reflecting. It makes me wonder, is it assuming a certain normal value here? That's another question. It's like, okay, if you don't actually assign normal values, how does it know to reflect the light? Maybe it's just using the, the direction of the primitives of these polygonal faces of the shapes. Interesting. Okay, thank you very much.